Welcome to the first Unisim tutorial. This tutorial assumes no prior process simulation knowledge and aims to give you basic familiarity with some simple process simulation operations. The context of this tutorial will be the production of a basic heat and mass balance for a simplified methane steam reformer. On the whiteboard, we'll introduce the topics that the tutorial covers and then introduce the block diagram of the process. We'll also define the simulation aim and state the thermodynamic model that we'll be using along with a simple conversion reaction. Once we've established the model basis, we'll dive straight into how we set up the model on Unisim. So, this tutorial is going to cover the following five topics. We're going to talk about setting components, thermodynamics and reactions. We're going to introduce the concepts of material streams and energy streams and see how they can be used to do physical property calculations. We're going to look at simple unit operations such as heaters, coolers, pumps and compressors. We're going to look at some simple reactors, a conversion reactor and a simple separator, a flash separator. We'll also then look at how to do some simple recycling and see that there is some subtlety how we do this correctly. Now, the aim of this simulation is to produce a very simple steady state heat and mass balance for a methane reformer. So if you recall the introductory lecture that we had, this is sort of that first level aim. The conditions that we're going to have is that we've got methane and water available, both at 25 degrees C and one bar. We could imagine that water is held in a tank somewhere and that methane is coming out of the ground in a pipeline, say, decompressed. We also have a chemical reactor, which is our reforming reactor at 900 degrees C and 25 bar. And so we'll see that we need to treat our feedstocks, our methane and our water, in order to achieve reaction conditions first. So let's talk over the block diagram that we're going to develop. Let's start by considering the water feed. Water is going to be used in excess in the chemical reaction. And first of all, we're going to pump it to 25 bar. We're going to pump liquid water. We never compress steam because pumping liquid water is safe, it's cheap, and it's very easy to do. What we're then going to do is boil the water. So we're going to turn it into steam, and then we're going to superheat that steam to 900 degrees C, which is the reactor temperature. Let's consider what we do to the methane. The methane is available at one bar, we need it at 25 bar, and so since methane is a gas, we're going to use some compressors to achieve that. Then, again, we're going to preheat the methane to 900 degrees C. So, we now have both of our feedstocks at the required pressure and the required temperature. What we're then going to do is feed them into our simplified chemical reactor, which is going to be a conversion reactor. And that conversion is going to be methane plus water, goes to carbon monoxide and hydrogen with a given extent of conversion. Now, remember that I said that water is in excess here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cool the reaction products down such that liquid water can be formed. The reason we do that is that liquid water is very easy to separate from carbon monoxide and hydrogen. And that is the next operation that we do. We separate the two non-condensable gases, carbon monoxide and hydrogen, from our liquid water. We're going to recycle the water back into the process and have hydrogen and carbon monoxide as our two end products. So let's think about some information that we need. We need to set some thermodynamics. We're going to make a sweeping assumption. We're going to assume that the NRTL thermodynamic model, the non-random to liquid thermodynamic model, is going to be valid because it models water's polarity nicely. We will see when we reach the appropriate point in the tutorial that this is a sweeping assumption that we really should validate properly. And again, this underpins the real necessity that you must validate your thermodynamic models correctly before you go any further. Otherwise, you get a few steps into your flow sheet development and then realise that everything you've done is potentially compromised. The next thing we're going to think about is the chemical reaction. We've already stated it's a conversion reaction, and we're going to assume that there's 98% conversion. So there'll be some unreacted water, but the reaction will mostly form carbon monoxide and hydrogen. We're going to be worrying about flow sheet development. We're not worrying about unit design. So we're going to use heaters, coolers and other simplified unit operations that will enable us to quickly build up the flow sheet to get an idea of what the flow sheet might look like. 
that's the first thing we do before we go any further in terms of more detailed design. We're also going to assume that water is required in excess, so 50% excess steam is required, and our basis flow rate is going to be tied to methane, and that is 100 kilomoles per hour processed. Usually what you do is set a production target, but it's simpler for this tutorial just to say, look, you're going to be converting 100 kilomoles an hour of methane. How much carbon monoxide and hydrogen do you form from that? Right, well, you can see on the screen in front of you that I have loaded up Unisim and we're presented with a blank screen to start with. So the first thing that we need to do is to define a new simulation. So to do that, I'm going to take my mouse to the row of icons below the menu and single left click new case. The first thing that appears is the simulation basis manager. It is within this basis manager that we do the first three steps of the simulation workflow, where we set the chemical species, where we set a thermodynamic description, and where we set the chemical reactions. So let's do the first of these things. You'll see within the simulation basis manager, the components tab is the first tab to open up. And in the box on the left hand side here, you have what's termed the master component list. This is where all the chemical species for your simulation are held. Now, as a side note, it's possible to have many different component lists that you can apply to subsets of a simulation, but we're not going to do that here. We're simply going to manipulate the master component list. So the first thing I'm going to do is to view it. When I view the master component list, by default, we'll see that it's empty. So what we need to do next is to populate this master component list with all the chemical species that, is going, that are going to feature within our simulation. So if we have a look at the components available within the Unisim database, we will see quite usefully that methane is the first component that is actually present. And there it is, methane sitting on the first line. So I'm going to single left click that and add pure. Now, there are three ways to specify names within Unisim's component database. You can look at what you might term the common name or the synonym, which is this list here. We can search by simulation name, which is this list here, which is sometimes slightly less than intuitive for new users. Or we can search by an empirical formula here. So it's typically good practice and quicker to search by formula. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to single left click the formula radio button. I'm going to search for carbon monoxide, CO. And we can see it's there on the third option down. So I'm going to add pure. I'm then going to search for hydrogen, H2, and we'll again see third option down, we have hydrogen. And finally, I'm going to search for water, H2O, and we'll see that there it is, second option down. Now note, when we search for a formula, we may find the same formula entered a number of times. And if we look down the proper names here, we've got ice, we've got water, we've got H2O, we've got refrigerant 718, We've got dihydrogen oxide. So there are a number of different ways that Unisim has stored for a given molecule, and which is why it makes sense to search for the molecule straight away. And finally, I'm going to add pure water. So there we have methane, carbon monoxide, hydrogen, and water as our four components. So that completes the chemical species for our problem. So I'm then going to close this component list. So the next tab to components is fluid packages. If we single left click on that, we will see that fluid package is actually the Unisim or HiSIS phrase for thermodynamic model. Again, we'll see that by default none are selected, but we're going to simply single left click on add and see what we have available. When this new window opens, we will see that there are a great many thermodynamic models implemented within Unisim which makes it a very, very useful tool for not just process simulation, but also for physical property calculation, subject to a suitably validated model. Don't forget that very key point that I made in the introductory lecture, which was that a thermodynamic model that hasn't been sufficiently validated is effectively useless. We are going to assume that a certain model applies to the simulation, but if you were doing this on yourself, you'd have to provide evidence that the thermodynamic model was indeed fit for purpose. And don't forget, we said that evidence could comprise, for example, plotting out a bubble point or dew point 
curves for certain mixtures against established literature or experimental values. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to use the non-random two-liquid or NRTL activity coefficient model. And the reason we chose that is it is good at describing mixtures that have polar molecules, of which of course water is one. So I'm going to single left click on the activity models selection box just to narrow the number of packages I have. And then I'm going to single left click on NRTL. Now before I do that, watch this indicator down here that is currently red. And when I single left click NRTL, it turns green. This is a good introduction to Unisim's traffic light color coding system. When you have a choice to make, there will be typically a status bar like that red or green bar. If it's red, it means you need to do something. If it's amber, it means you've started to do something, but you haven't completed it, as in the property package or model isn't properly and completely set up. If it's green, it means that the property package or model is fully specified. But note that because it's fully specified, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is correct for your purposes. So always make sure that all the information that is pertinent to your simulation has been entered. Now, we're not going to tune the non-random two-liquid model any further. We're going to assume that the database coefficients, which will be here under binary coefficients, are fit for purpose. Of course, this would be part of your validation process if you were setting this up independently. But we've already made the assumption that the standard NRTL model is fit for purpose. So having chosen that, we're going to simply close that box. The final thing we're going to do is to set the chemical reactions. So if we skip over the next three tabs to reactions and single left click that, we will see that we have a list of components on the left hand side, a list of chemical reactions in the middle, and then what are we called on the right hand side, global reaction sets and associated fluid packages. So associated fluid package is the thermodynamic model that underpins the reaction. So let's go through this in sequence. We need to define a reaction, so I'm going to single left click add reaction, and we will see a selection box appear with the five key reactions that are described in the introductory lecture. If you note, the default highlighted reaction on my setup is actually a sixth reaction, which is a non-standard reaction that I wrote, and the reason that is there is because it demonstrates how you can extend Unisim or HiSys yourself should you have a reaction mechanism that isn't one of the defaults. And so that reaction mechanism was programmed and compiled in Visual Basic and then linked as a DLL into Unisim. However, for this tutorial, we're going to single left click conversion and then add reaction. The next screen that appears allows you to add the components to your reaction. So I'm going to add methane as a reaction raw material and I'm going to add water as a reaction raw material. And I'm going to add my two products, carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Note that Unisim already knows from its database their precise molecular weights. What Unisim requires from us is the stoichiometric coefficients that describe their place within the reaction. Now, stoichiometric coefficients are negative for species that are consumed by a reaction and positive for species that are produced by a reaction. So consumption is negative and production is positive. If we look at the stoichiometry of our methane reforming reaction, we have effectively a one to one to one to one stoichiometric balance. So we have one methane reacting with one water, producing one CO and three hydrogens, apologies. It's one to one to one to three. So the stoichiometric coefficient for methane is minus one, it's consumed. The stoichiometric coefficient for water is again minus one, it's consumed, and it's consumed in equal ratio to methane. The stoichiometric coefficient for carbon monoxide is one, because it is produced with the same stoichiometry as a consumption of both water and methane, and it's positive because it is produced by a reaction. And the stoichiometric coefficient for hydrogen is three, again because three times more hydrogen is produced than methane consumed, and it is positive because again, we have a production. Now, note that our traffic light system still says not ready, but the first thing that we check rather than the traffic light system in the reaction um, definition page here is the balance error. The balance error is zero, which means my stoichiometry is correct. 
Note that the reaction heat at 25 degrees C has also now been calculated. Again, this is a good example of how Unisim can help calculate various pieces of data for you that you can then go on and use, for example, in a hand calculation. Now, the traffic light here says not ready for a reason, because we haven't looked at this second tab yet. So let's single click, left click basis, and we will see the various parameters here that are used to calculate a conversion reaction. Now, always read the definition on the box. Conversion here is a percentage conversion, and it is not fractional conversion. Please don't make that mistake. Temperatures, if you need to enter a temperature dependence, are measured in Kelvin, not Celsius, and not Fahrenheit. So we have a choice here as to how we define the extent of reaction with respect to a component. And so we're going to say that our extent of reaction is defined against methane. If we look at reaction phase, we can say, well, the reaction extent pertains to either the vapor phase, the liquid phase, or some combined phase, or just everything that we've got reacting. The methane steam reforming reaction is gas phase. We, we could set the vapor phase option here, but there will be no other phase other than vapor when we define the simulation. So I'm just going to keep overall defined. Now, remember that we said we want a 98% conversion and we didn't specify temperature dependence, so I'm just going to simply put 98% here and see my traffic light box has now gone green. The final thing that we ought to change is the reaction name. We only have one reaction in this particular example, but when you have many, it's very useful to be able to identify between them. <clears throat> so I'm going to single left click in this box here, and I'm going to call this CH4-reform. So I have an idea exactly what this reaction is. I'm just going to press enter. I'm then going to close this um, reaction definition box and then I'm going to furthermore close the new reaction box and I return to the simulation basis manager opened at the reactions tab and there is one final thing to do. I have defined a reaction here. This belongs now to what is called the global reaction set. We can simply left click view set and we can see our reaction is there. Now let's close that. What we haven't done is associated this reaction with a thermodynamic description. So that's the final thing that we do. With global reaction set selected, single left clicked on it, we're going to single left click add to fluid package, add a thermodynamic description. When we do that, this add global reaction set box opened and we're going to single left click add set to fluid package. So that is the first three steps of the simulation workflow complete. We have set components, we have set a thermodynamic description, and we have set the chemical reactions. The next thing we do is to enter the simulation environment and start to draw up our flow sheet. So let's do that now.